You ready for this? Yes. Awesome, let's go. Let's go. What is vibing? This is Vish. And today, we'll be responding to Sadhguru's video on the role of emotions in business. I'm a meditation coach and I've guided hundreds of people on their meditation journeys. If you have any questions about it or want a one-on-one -on -one session with me, either message me on Instagram at Vish Vibes or comment down below. And today, I'm here with Hi, my name is Madhu and I'm Vish's aunt and I'm visiting from LA. I'm a human resource uh, graduate and uh, I have experience working with different domains of people management. I have a master's degree in human resource from JC College, Mysore. Thank you for sharing your experience. You're welcome. Sadhguru is a yogi, mystic and visionary who is truly enlightening the world. Do you know much about Sadhguru? Yes. Um, I have watched a lot of videos of Sadhguru, mm -hmm. uh, especially um, where he talks about business leaders and he's talking um, uh, about business related uh, people or process. Uh, those are my favorite part. Okay, awesome. And this is going to be a new video, right? Yes. Well, let's watch it. Yeah, let's go. So my question is to um, no one in particular, but everybody in general, as to to what extent does uh, emotion uh, play the role of, of a fuel in um, taking and implementing business decisions? Mr. Kamath, Mr. Kamath. Yeah, I, I think it's a very good uh, question. See, emotion as a positive trigger, I think, is always welcome, and you need to uh, you know get that high from that emotion. But at the same time, you need to be able to control uh, the whole emotional exercise. Uh, I will actually turn the question around and answer it in a different way. I think given all that is happening around uh, us at all times, that is emotional stability. By that I meant under stress, under extreme stress, how does the person actually stand up? And I think Sadhguru touched upon it in his own nice way uh, in several uh, different at several different points. Equanimity. And that's what, you know, his part of what he's teaching uh, gets you but in most real situations you will find that a person cracks under uh, that sort of stress how do you maintain uh, uh, emotional integrity emotional stability i think was something that we actually went about doing a 360 went about doing a 720 to understand who stacked up how and that became a very important part of our own looking at uh, the process so to me emotion is uh, a key underplayed uh, uh, attribute and we need to uh, probably bring it up the table along with all the other attributes that we look at in the CEOs. I mean, as he rightly pointed out, but uh, being equanimous, unfortunately, a lot of times is understood by people as becoming… Em uh, being emotionless. Mm -hmm. Yes. Emotion is a large part of a human being. Whether your emotions are working for you or against you, yes. That's a very good is point. the question. If you know how to make your emotions work for you, emotion uh, has a very big role in doing anything that we do because… That's super interesting already, right? Based off of the comparison, it's only been maybe 10 seconds of what Sadhguru has been saying. Right. At least for me personally, I was able to resonate with so much of what he was saying compared to the other guy. And I was getting kind of lost with the other guy's talks, right? Right. But he kept it simple. There's no positive, there's no negative. It's literally just, is it working for you? Is it working against you? Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, um, the way he puts the concept um, in a layman terms mm -hmm. is the best thing because even like a simple layman can understand what he's trying to say. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, the beauty of it is how he relates to the business part of it, mm. um, giving the correlation and, and the impact of certain terms uh, or business jargons. Mm -hmm. He puts it in layman terms. That's the best part of his, um, of his videos. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Let's continue. Yeah. Emotion is something which will allow you if you have a certain emotion towards something. It will allow you a natural focus of the mind. You don't have to strive. If you, it is like you've fallen in love with somebody, nobody has to tell you, you must think about them. Mm. You can't help thinking about it. So, emotion, I would take it one step further and devotion towards something yes. that you're doing. If you're devoted, absolutely devoted to what you're doing, you don't have to try to think up things. 
It's just that your whole system is working for that all the time. So devotion is another dimension of intelligence. People think devotion is only in the temple. No, devotion is not at all about the temple. A temple may inspire devotion in a lot of people, but devotion means you hitch your emotion towards something. After that, you don't have to bother how to get there, it'll just anyway get you there. Mm. There's a beautiful story in the yogic lore. An old yogi who was over ninety years of age, as he's been going to… on the pilgrimage to Kedar every year for the last sixty-five years, over ninety years he went. People saw him walking, obviously he looked very frail. People said, do you understand this is a mountain, you have to walk up the mountain. You think you can make it? He smiled and said, I already hitched my heart there. It's only the remaining part of the body which has to get there, it will get there anyway. So emotion and devotion has this capability. If you hitch your emotions onto something and leave it, the rest of you anyway will go there. Wow, just yet another beautiful video by Sadhguru. And before we start, we'll take a nice deep breath together, mm -hmm. in through the nose, out through the mouth. <sighs> Hopefully that breath helped with your emotions. Mm -hmm. And with that, I'd love to hear your reaction or response to the video. Sure. Um, so mainly my understanding about this particular video, I think he said um, uh, predominantly two things. One is the emotions and that the other part uh, which he calls as devotion and I would say a passion basically. Uh, so first I would talk about the emotion part of it. So even in the um, a, in any business school when um, uh, when people are coming out to be um, future leaders, emotional intelligence is um, one big part of um, you know the subject of study. And uh, it is mainly because um, uh, it becomes the primary, um, uh, primary or the crucial role uh, to build within when you you have to uh, manage whatever it can be your business, your people, or you know managing your own self for that matter. It becomes mm -hmm. so crucial for you to build within. So when you're talking about emotional intelligence, like um, if you go back and look, there are like hundreds of studies which, ha which have been done just to understand that how a human being responds, reacts to different situations in mm -hmm. terms of his um, capabilities. So building that kind of personality within becomes um, uh, very challenging uh, because it, it's not just one factor which determines your emotional intelligence but there are like w so many factors like how you manage your anxiety, the uh, anger, um, uh, the stress um, and uh, you know uh, how you keep that uh, neutral theme or neutral face just to determine your approach towards that particular situation becomes very important. So um, that being said, the second part of it is uh, passion, which he calls mm -hmm. devotion. On top of my head, I remember uh, reading this in a book which says that uh, when uh, your passion becomes your work, mm -hmm. you know, the work is not work but is more like a play. Yes. Yes. So uh, lucky are those people who can find that kind of passion which turns into their daily work. Um, um, so that would give you that kind of uh, a push or motivation uh, to look forward every single day mm -hmm. to do the same thing over and over again with that kind of love. And that's what uh, you call passion. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps what you're doing, uh, influencing a lot of people, mm -hmm. um, though you are an, um, you know, computer science graduate, <laughs> going to be um, in future, but your passion is to influence people, right? Mm -hmm. And you're influencing in terms of your talks, in terms of, you know, uh, helping people meditate, um, uh, you know, also at the fitness level and different um, uh, levels mm -hmm. with different people. Uh, so that's your passion. So I see that um, when your passion turns into work, it's, it's more easy and naturally your emotions um, are handled by your own self because uh, you're not working, you're actually playing and you feel good about it. 
Mm. Well, thank you so much for sharing that beautiful perspective mm -hmm. on this topic as well as the experiences you've had. Mm -hmm. It clearly shows that you have been able to put into practice the sense of devotion in your business world of experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, it seems like you definitely resonated with what Sadhguru was saying too, which I have to definitely agree with. And to kind of hop on what you mentioned with regards to when things are your passion, it's like a play. I definitely agree a lot with that mm -hmm. because at the same time I've learned from Sadhguru, life itself becomes a play. You understand? Right. So when you essentially learn how to make life your mm -hmm. quote-unquote passion mm -hmm. or life your goal instead of career, family, school, all these things are great, right? Mm -hmm. But at the end, as I've learned from South Korea, instead of preparing for the university, mm -hmm. we must all learn to prepare for the universe mm -hmm. and prepare for life, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Are you trying to make a living or are you trying to make a life, mm -hmm. as South Korea says? Mm -hmm. Now, these are things that obviously matter, right? Like the money, like the family and all those things. But placing that of highest priority, mm -hmm. which in reality is okay, but at the same time, it's not practical, it's not sustainable. Family is great too, but eventually people pass and that's just the reality of life. When you make life, life's greatest purpose, mm -hmm. then naturally everything is a part of life. So everything right. else will just fall into place. Right. So I really definitely connect with that point as well from mm -hmm. what you mentioned. And it truly becomes just a fun and play like he's mentioned as Auntie was mentioning, because when you're detached, it's all about being connected, but detached. Right. Being involved, but not being entangled. When you're able to do that with such focus mm -hmm. and connection, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like I said, not entanglement, mm -hmm. everything becomes easy, right. effortless, and your impact is actually greater mm -hmm. than if you were to have been attached. Because right. when you're attached, that's where emotions start taking over you. Mm -hmm. And as he says it very simply and beautifully, it's a very simple question. Is your body, is your mind, are your emotions working for you or against you? you? It's very simple. There's no positive, negative. There's a quote unquote, big Western spiritual kind of push in the world mm -hmm. where it's all about positivity, positive vibes, positive this, positive that. You see at the end, whenever you shoot for something at that level, it is only natural for the compliment to come your way in some mm -hmm. sort of form. Mm -hmm. So that is why, as he mentioned, being equanimous, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, is really just the way to go, right? Being neutral mm -hmm. and allowing for these positive negative things to come and go mm -hmm. will be fine. Mm -hmm. But actually, as I learned from Kobe Bryant, right? Mm -hmm. He basically said it in a very simple way. When you start really focusing on that kind of neutral path, mm -hmm. the highs, become lower, the lows become higher, right? Beautiful. And you're just zoned in all the time. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I've learned from Sadhguru, when you're truly able to do that though, mm -hmm. that itself is like a high. Right, right. right. That's, if anything, life's ultimate high. Right. Then any drug, any drink, any snack, any food, any anything else, life's greatest gift is literally the present moment. Right. There's a reason it's called present. Right, right? Yes. And so when you're able to truly tap into that, everything else will just fall into place. Right. And as he says, devotion is very important. So by giving all of yourself to this moment, when you surrender, as Eckhart Tolle beautifully says, to this moment, then everything will just come and flow naturally through right. you. As I've learned from Eckhart Tolle, you don't have a life. Mm -hmm. You are a part of life. Right. And that sense of individuality or separation that we tend to have at the psychological level is really just false. Mm -hmm. We are literally a part of life. Right. And so by truly realizing that you are a part of it, you're able to naturally connect with other people without even having to fake it, mm -hmm. right? You realize, as Ramana Maharishi says, there is no other. When right. he was asked, how do you treat others? There yes. is no other. Yes. You are all truly one. Yes. And that is such a beautiful and profound realization. And so I very much, again, appreciate so that we were talking about this in the business forum. And yeah, emotions are okay, but at the end, are they working for you or are they are working you against you? you? Also, before we end, she has a question for you guys. Well, I want to ask all of you viewers, just give a minute and think about it and, and tell us that what is the biggest emotion in your lives, which is which is very difficult or challenging for you to handle and how did you do that yeah absolutely We'd love to hear your experiences with this and with that if you have any other video requests please also comment that down below too make it a great day take it joyful and stay conscious, conscious. awesome job auntie and now she's going back to la wish Bye. her the safe travels <laughs>